Good morning. My name is Chris Florin. I'm coming to you from Southern California, uh, more specifically an area called Blue Cut, which is right on the San Andreas Fault uh, near Interstate 15 at the Cajon Pass. So right behind me, right there, that is the San Andreas Fault going away from us in that direction. And the road down there is Historic Route 66. And there's obviously a, a train tracks with a freight train. And I'm here basically as part of a challenge to make a geology field report as part of the uh, exotic terrain A to Z uh, sessions that Professor Nick Zentner is uh, live streaming on YouTube. Decided to come out and look at something called the Polona Schist, which is, uh, I believe, green schist from what I've read. Uh, you can see some of it behind me here now. Um, it's a metamorphic rock. It's very blue-green in color. Um, I'm not a geologist. I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, my work is mostly with race cars, so I don't really know what I'm talking about here, but I'm enjoying learning about uh, geology from Professor Nick. And I realize the reason I like it so much is that, uh, well, you know that feeling, um, that dream that you keep having where you're still in college and you wake up and uh, there's a class that you haven't gone to that you just remembered and you haven't studied and you don't know any of the material and it's the finals, right? So now you have to go take the final exam, but you're not prepared. It's a dream that I have uh, recurring, um, even though I've been out of school for years. But uh, uh, this, this series, I guess, and learning from Professor Nick is kind of the opposite of that feeling um, because I feel like I'm learning, I'm having fun, and if there were a test, I would be prepared. But there is no final, as far as I know. And this is, I'm on a big outcrop that's a hillside, and I'm in a, a very dangerous looking uh, rocky uh, wash here. So uh, I hope there's no flash flood or earthquake. <laughs> um, I scrambled up the side of the mountain here. So let's get a better idea of what's going on here. Um, this is the Roadside Geology of Southern California book that I brought with me by Arthur Sylvester and Elizabeth Gans. And uh, so just to orient everyone, um, we are down here in the transverse ranges. Uh, of course, there's the Peninsula Range Batholith that we learned about on Friday. There's the Sierra Nevada Batholith. And we are in between along with the Mojave Desert. And the transverse range, as far as I know, is one of the only east-west trending mountain ranges in the country. And it's done that because of some uh, clockwise rotation I guess it used to be uh, more north-south, and now um, a block of crust has rotated, which might sound familiar from Pacific Northwest geology. Um, and it's also compressed because we have the Pacific plate uh, smushing the North American plate here where the San Andreas Fault takes a bend. And so if we look at this other page here, we can see that bend. And uh, so San Andreas Fault runs this way, and so we're right here in the middle where it bisects the uh, transverse ranges at an angle and in this shortening zone is I guess the compression of uh, the crust. Here's a really cool relief map showing the San Andreas Fault very clearly running uh, diagonally across the page here. And so the Polona Schist is on this side of the fault, the uh, southwestern side. The rocks on the other side are completely different. Um, so I think it's safe to say this uh, area we're in here probably moved several hundred miles. I don't know how many exactly. We've got Interstate 15 running north. If you uh, ever driven to Las Vegas from Southern California, you will know uh, this, this stretch of road. It come, goes up a long pass called the Cajon Pass and you can see uh, freight trains running on the left as you go up towards the high desert. Uh, but uh, we're right here, I believe, uh, this little sliver of purple. The purple is the Polona Schist and uh, we're on the southwest side of the fault. This is Lone Pine Canyon that we looked at before, San Andreas Fault running up to the northwest. And you can see um, there's quite a bit of this Polona schist on the southwest side of the fault. And Cajon Creek here takes this big, this nice lazy bend because all of this land has been displaced right laterally, as far as I understand. Here's a passage that I really enjoyed. Uh, relating to the San Gabriel Mountains. 
Uh, the entire rock complex is so unique that some authors believe they represent an exotic terrain, perhaps a small microcontinent added to the North American plate during the subduction of the Farallon plate. So the big event of uh, 100 million years ago is in there, so maybe the Polona schist was part of that. Uh, let's take a look more closely at the schist itself. It's, uh, it's got some silvery flecks on some of the pieces here. They're very, very shiny uh, metallic flakes. I brought along a small hammer. It's definitely not a rock hammer. Uh, it is, does have a square face. I think it's a leather working hammer, but let's see if we can get a look inside of one of these guys here. There we go. It's, it's very flaky stuff. Uh, it didn't take much to uh, turn this into many flaky slices here. And it doesn't really look all that different on the inside. Um, the, the roadside geology book was saying that this is low-grade metamorphose. I don't exactly understand what that means, but maybe it's related to how easily it comes apart. And the, it said also that the current understanding is that this stuff represents what was scraped off of the top of the Farallon plate as it subducted under North America. Uh, I think it was metamorphosed in the Cretaceous period. Uh, don't quote me on that though. Here's an interesting piece that's really clearly folded at 90 degrees. Um, there's what looks like some quartz in there. I see some rust colorations, but I think this is still the green schist, the Polona schist. Oh man, look at this piece. Super clear striations, layers in the rock. Uh, it's sitting vertically, but you can see all the different shades of green and some yellow and whiter colors in there, but lots and lots of layering. So as I understand it, schist used to be shale, which used to be mud. So does that represent mud deposits on the bottom of a shallow sea, maybe? I don't know. So thanks for joining me on this uh, adventure to see the blue cut Polona schist. Uh, I'll uh, end by looking back across the road here. I scrambled down because I was tired of almost falling uh, in those loose rocks, but I was up in there. This is Chris Florin signing out. Thanks to Professor Nick for such an interesting way to spend some time during the pandemic. Cheers.